We're now going to switch gears uh, yet, yet again, uh, moving from uh, German business history organizations to the state of Canada, Canadian business history past and present to the state of business archive management in Canada. For this, we have arranged a duo of notable archivists. The first is Amy Korczynski, Dr. Amy Korczynski, archivist at CD Financial Group. The second is retired archivist with the Library and Archives of Canada, Stephen Salmon. Amy and Stephen, over to you. And you may stay there or you may come up here. I don't know what you guys decided. Okay, great. Great, so this is almost TV green and I've got my chair up there, so I'm feeling very comfortable right now. <laughs> Uh, so I'm very pleased to speak to you today. I have a rather unconventional career within the bank, you could say, um, and I do work completely on my own in the archives, so I'm what is called a loan arranger. So I'm always very happy to come out and speak to people about what I do on a daily basis. And today I'm going to give you in less than 10 minutes an overview of TD's archives, um, a, a case for supporting business archives, and also some strategies for maintaining um, business archives over a long period. So, oh, my alignment might be off. Um, this is one of the best succinct definitions of how a corporate archives operates and what purpose it holds within the institution that I really like. So, what we have in TD is indeed a department specifically charged with the systematic acquisition, preservation, and servicing of corporate historical records and artifacts deemed to be of permanent value in documenting the company's founding and subsequent growth. So this is exactly um, what we are in TD's archives. Um, we're not a traditional archives. We're definitely not a museum, and I certainly am not records management. I don't have um, any input really in kind of the global records management policies across the bank in various lines of businesses. So TD Bank's archives were founded in 1976, so we are also f celebrating a 40th anniversary this year. Um, under the Department of Economic Research, and we've had various homes since then. Uh, we were part of legal for uh, more than a decade. We were part of corporate and public affairs, and now we fall within community relations, which is under the marketing umbrella. We are housed, um, oh, sorry, so we collect and preserve the bank's historical and administrative records, including almost all of our predecessing entities that you can think of, Canada Trust, um, really big corporations like that, Bank of Toronto, Dominion Bank, but also much smaller um, companies like Waterloo Savings and Trust, Hamilton, kind of regional trust companies and banks. We're housed in TD's, uh, Toronto's TD Centre, uh, which is really spectacular in the North Tower. Um, this is a, a view of base, our, uh, our view over King and Bay um, up there. In a custom-built vault with environmental controls, automated lighting, compact shelving, and workspace for performing conservation and research. And I'm very fortunate that the archives are co-located with our uh, art department. Our art collection lives in the same home, so it's really important that the, the artworks are clearly of very high monetary value, as, as much as they are valuable to us in other ways. So we've built a really, really excellent space that accommodates um, the proper care of both collections. We collect a very broad spectrum of records and artifacts, which include internal publications, correspondence, founding documents, architectural records, artifacts, documentary artwork, marketing materials. We have a currency collection off-site, audiovisual material, a library, and more than 30,000 historical photographs. So it's very diverse material with very diverse needs. Um, the archives provides vital information across every line of business at TD, delivering practical services that could not be easily secured from another business unit. So something that I love about coming into work is that I never really know who is going to be at the other end of the phone when it rings. Um, every day is a little bit different. Every week is a little bit different. I really communicate with almost all of our lines of business. This quotation is something wonderful, I think, that was said um, recently when I attended the uh, International Council on Archives section on Business Archives meeting um, in Atlanta, which just happened at the beginning of April. Um, Melanie Aspie of the Rothschild Archive uh, said, you can't build a reputation on something you're going to do. You have to look back through your history. So everything that TD claims to be, everything that any brand puts out there in the, in the world, all of that has to be substantiated through archival evidence, and that all lives within the corporate archives. So I can't think of a more important reason why we wouldn't sustain our archives and care for them properly. So why else should businesses support a corporate archive? For one, to ensure that memory is not lost um, in rapid employee turnover. 
The archives also support brand reputation and distinguish you from your competitors. Heritage plays a very important role in corporate culture. It fosters pride and loyalty among employees. It connects corporate culture to broader social history, especially in moments such as Canada's upcoming sesquicentennial. It's us putting the narrative of TD's growth into the growth of Canada because we, are such, we have such a long um, history, 161 years. Archives should be and most often are employed um, as an essential element in brand ed education, and this is both in the induction of new staff and the training of global brand ambassadors. And also, obviously, uh, you know, we, we consistently document the evolution of the brand in the archives. The archives can support um, very practical things like the launch of new products, um, one example of which I'll show you shortly, uh, sustainability initiatives, community anniversaries, things like that, that all goes directly back to our, our archival evidence. And in a lot of cases, um, their archives are very closely related to the legal department. We are not as closely related as we once were. Um, but we do occasionally assist in resolving legal issues by providing critical evidence in cases involving copyright liability, compliance, that sort of thing. So sustaining a business archives, as any business archivist would readily tell you, takes constant advocacy and constant education, um, partly just because of this high turnover of, of positions across the bank. It's kind of like me, and then there's 85,000 employees at TD, and I have my kind of natural allies that I go to for things that I'm always looking for new acquisitions from, or people that routinely every year I know are going to come to me at certain points in the calendar for, for assistance. But it's kind of a constant process of education and outreach, so I do a lot of speaking around the bank. Uh, the value of any corporate archive can only grow with its permanence, so the longer that you sustain these activities, the more valuable your archive is to the corporation. Sustainability also depends on the archivist's ability to proactively look for new services that are not being offered by another business unit and finding units to partner with. So at the bottom of my list of recommendations, I urge any corporate archivist um, to be creative. I also encourage anyone within the bank um, to always float their ideas past me because we've come up with some really wacky and fun um, uh, things around employee engagement, especially it's really easy to be creative and fun around employee engagement. I'll give you an example of that in a moment too. So just a few recommendations um, from my time so far at TD would be to continue to build partnerships with natural allies in order to create new services, contribute to new campaigns and product launches. And within TD or any bank archive, um, natural partners would be within marketing, corporate and public affairs. Um, I deal a lot with real estate. Conduct new research on brand history, including hot topics um, such as women in banking, diversity, history of electronic and web banking, banking on the frontier, first and second world wars. These are topics that come up time and time again, but we can't just recycle the same facts, the same five photographs over and over again. Um, there's way more information, there's way more stories to be found yet in TD's archive, and I feel that when I stop finding those new stories, it'll be time to think of what's the next step. Proactively inform business lines of upcoming anniversaries. That's something that I do in terms of our retail banking, going into different communities and proactively informing them you're about to have a 100th anniversary, you're about to celebrate 150 years in Quebec, for instance, was a few years ago. Um, so the archives, the archival material is very much used for that kind of, to mark those kinds of milestones. Um, and at the same time, we also have enterprise-wide milestones that sometimes are overlooked. Um, the acquisition of Waterhouse happened 20 years ago, things like that, just always being in touch with my different business partners. And finally, carrying forward a heritage mindset, um, which fosters pride among employees and conveys an open stance. Um, again, it's part of this education process. Why do we have an archives? What's in them? And how can we help you um, on just any project um, that you may be working on? So just a few examples of things that we've done recently. Um, on the upper right hand side, sorry, left hand side, um, Memory Bank, 40 years of TD archives. We just filmed a video that does exactly what I just described. It says who we are, where we are, what's in the archives, and what are some of the ways that we can help you. On the lower left hand side is one of the wacky things we did. A group came to me and said, could we do a tour of 
historic buildings that are related to TD's foundations on a bus, so camp counselor style. I have several times now, we, rent, we hire a bus, we drive around Toronto, um, and I highlight um, particular architectural gems in our history. Um, and it's proven to be very popular for um, employee engagement. Um, employee Appreciation Month is coming up in June, so I'll be getting some calls soon. Uh, we have an internal social media platform, and that is probably the easiest way um, to reach our, our very broad employee base, so it's kind of hard to read any of that, but in the middle there it says TD's history, so I maintain a blog there, there's a forum, people can contribute ideas of areas of TD's history that they'd like to find out more about. Um, I blog about some of these milestones, um, the one at the top there, 50 years ago, just recently, I can't see the date of that, it's too small, but 50 years ago, like a week ago, um, TD Tower reached its full height. And so for the next year, TD, uh, TD Center is celebrating 50 years next year. So throughout the year, I'll be blogging about various milestones um, leading up to the completion of that project, um, which is the photograph below, um, is, is uh, the top of the TD Tower looking over at Toronto City Hall. Um, this photo was taken around 1965. And then on the right-hand side, that's just an installation view of a Remembrance Day display that we have up in our main branch at King and Bay um, every year of some of our war memorials. Great. That's it. <laughs> Thank you.